Hey my CG peeps, it is Mimi. Just checking in. I don't know, as soon as like as soon as I get on here, it's like all of a sudden I I gotta swallow and swallow. You know how you just realize, you know, I mean swallowing, look at my lips. I don't know what it is. It's I guess it might be nerves. It might be just nerves doing, you know, talking to your computer. See, I have to swallow. Let me get a drink here. Oh, crap. I'm out of water. <laughs> that figures. Anyway, I'm just calling to check in, check in, let you know how I was doing. Um, I'm about the same. I'm like staying like at 199, uh, 199.4 I was today. So uh, this is phase three, day 14 for me. So I might just be stabilizing right there at 199 and I'm not going to fret about it. Um, I'm, you know, I'm eating uh, phase three foods and uh, really not a whole lot of different changes. I did notice that... Um, Yesterday I ate some cashews and I didn't eat them the day before, so I uh, they cut it, they upset my stomach and I might have I might have an issue with nuts that might just be that might just be the bottom line with me I just have uh, issues let me see if this helps let me help a little bit. Um, I just might have issues with nuts, so I'm gonna. As a matter of fact, I just ate a little bit of some um, macadamia nuts, not just now. Uh, probably about six of them, but um, I might have to just lay off of them. I know too that I have some sensitivities to cheese, so I'm not eating so much of the cheese anymore. Um, this afternoon for lunch, I had a piece of salmon uh, in the skillet with, I had some onions and peppers. Um, I do know that if I'm not careful with the canned tomatoes, the chili canned tomatoes, chopped tomatoes, I eat those with chicken and saute them in chicken. And I had those on, I had that on face too, uh, to where I just let it cook down these tomatoes. First, I would cook my chicken some, and then I'd finish cooking it with the tomatoes and just let it cook and cook and cook and cook until uh, the moisture was absorbed in it. And I also poured the can, um, drained the liquid off of these tomatoes. But tomatoes are naturally high in sugar anyway, and of course they are really considered a fruit. So, um, But... That tanginess of that, and then the meat with the garlic on it, and salt and pepper, and tastes so good. But I do know that, you know, it's I probably need to be careful with that. So that's what I had yesterday, and I probably had too much of it with the tomatoes on some lettuce. So tonight I'm going to have I lay down another piece of salmon, have salmon and asparagus, and uh, see how that see how that goes. I did go to the restroom. I took, I had those Dr. Schultz, I don't know if you ever heard of him. I had uh, this Formula One and I forgot about them and I'm out of magnesium and I need to go and get that um, this week sometime. But I took three of those last night because I hadn't gone to the restroom. So as soon as like I get on phase three, it's like I stop uh, doing the things that are right for me and so I've got to really be careful with that. I have not had any on purpose any uh, starches or sugars or anything like that. I haven't even had really a desire uh, for it. So hopefully if this is where I'm going to stabilize uh, for the next few weeks then I'm, I'm cool with that. I did take. I did stop taking the hormone uh, spray that I had bought off of my daughter's friend, thinking that might have something to do with it. Me retaining water or something, and so I just went ahead and stopped that. And I thought maybe I'll 
I'll start it back up maybe in phase four. I don't know for sure what I'll do about that. So I'm kind of iffy. I, I, I like it. It's like I felt a little bit because it's getting close to the end of the month. And like I said, I still have ovaries. I don't, I don't have, um, Tom doesn't come and visit me anymore. Thank goodness. But uh, I still get a, sometimes a little touch PB, uh, PB PMS. Um, I could tell when I was cleaning up after lunch, I kind of got just like this aggravation just come over me, you know, just like, like that. And so I'm thinking, you know, it's getting close to the end of the month. And uh, so anyway, just a little aggravate. I just got aggravated. So it was for no reason, just come out just comes out of the blue and uh, so that's about it I don't really have anything else um, to talk about you know I was concerned about maybe the nuts the Harman spray that I stopped taking and maybe cut back on the nuts and uh, I have tried to continue drinking um, my water so um, that's about it uh, I hope everybody is doing well and uh, maintaining and releasing and stabilizing and all those wonderful things. And and uh, I hope for sure I do the same. And uh, I am so, 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 so looking forward to uh, March 17th to get here and to load and to get back on the losing train because um, I am just excited to to once and for all to and it's not about getting in a size 12 jeans or 8 jeans it's just to get this weight off and to just really uh, be comfortable in my skin to um, not looking for you know I, I don't desire to have a body of a 20 year old or um, a 25 year old or even a 30 year old and I don't even care about loose skin and that I've had you know I don't know if I said I had two emergency c-sections and when I mean C-sections, I mean cut from the belly button all the way down. Um, my second child was, she weighed 10 pounds. And when they broke my water, her foot popped out and her umbilical cord popped out. And uh, so I was rushed into the... Um, into the operating room and completely knocked out and apparently that was the first prolapse cord that they had at the hospital here in my area so um, from that I after I had her and she was absolutely beautiful and and pink and and uh, so I went home, uh, literally I went home the next day after being, they had to cut me open and they also had to cut my uterus in a T-shape, which they advised me not to have any more children uh, after that because of the stress on my uterus being cut in the scar tissue. But when I went home the next day after having a 10-pound baby, um, my fever went up to a temperature of 107 to 108 and uh, needless to say I had to go back in the hospital and go into ICU and I lost so much blood from having the baby and from the surgery and uh, apparently they run tests on you when you're in ICU and not in a coma it is the worst place to be because you don't have a bathroom in ICU they want to do all kinds of scans on you. They do things to you, and it was awful. It was the most humiliating uh, thing. And I mean, they send people. I mean, you're sitting on a bedpan in ICU, and they would, they would. I mean, literally, I had this nurse named Harriet, 
And uh, you don't want to tell your nurse if you're constipated or not because they don't say take this little pill. They put gloves on, just to let you know. I'm sure there's people out there that's been in ICU before, maybe. But anyway, why I was getting all my pints of blood, but you would be sitting on a bedpan, and they would, had no problem of saying so-and-so's out here to see you. You know, do you want them to come in? And literally, this is an incident that truly, I'm not kidding you, happened. This nurse said, there is a rabbi out here to see you. Would you like to talk to him? Now, first of all, my maiden name is not Jewish. I might have the nose. Let me give you a profile. Yes, I do. I do have, I do have a, a nose. My married name is not Jewish. There is no Jewish. I'm like, I'm sitting on a bedpan for crying out. I'm like, yeah, Harriet, why don't you empty out all the synagogues and let's send all the rabbis in here to talk to me. I'm on a flipping bedpan. So I finally had to say, listen, you either put me on another floor and get me out of ICU. Well, the problem was they didn't know what happened. They didn't know why I have got this bacteria problem. You know, you have a fever, you know, of 108, and uh, after you had a baby, and I'm sure they were trying to cover all their tracks, but they do torturous things to you, and they, they put specialists on your case, and they're doing experiments on you, so... I made my husband promise me, I will never, do not let me go into ICU unless I am in a coma. I'm sorry, but they, they cannot be trusted. So I did have one nurse that came in late at night, in the late shift, and I mean, she was very sweet. I don't remember her name because she would actually come in late at night and, and wash. I mean, she would, you know, she would wash my back and the... I mean, it was just, she was just very sweet, very caring, very private. And you could tell this, this woman was there because uh, she was just called to be there. You know, there's just some people that just aren't called to, to be in nursing. I mean, you have to, I understand you have to be separated from a lot of things, but if you lack that compassion, then you need to step back and think, is this something that the profession I want to be in? Because you're a human being there. So anyway, that was my little side note. So, uh, needless to say, I got pregnant again and didn't know it. Got thrown from a horse. I had to go back into the hospital, into the emergency room, because I woke up with this severe pain. So it was terrifying to think that, oh my gosh, I'm going to have to go into the hospital again. Because I was in the hospital for a couple weeks. They, I was in ICU, I think, for like three or four days. And then I had to stay in. And they were constantly monitoring me. And um, this is terrible because I had a newborn baby at home. Which they wouldn't let the newborn baby come and see me. But they did let me have like a pass. They, um, they put the IV. You still have the IV in you. And they just kind of... Uh, tape over it and that was for all the um, serious antibiotics they were putting me on. Some of them were so new that they were putting on me um, or putting in me. I mean that they weren't, uh, some of them weren't even released yet on the market. They were just being used in hospitals. But anyway, I did get when I went to uh, the emergency room, when I woke up with the pain, thinking it was appendicitis, unfortunately, they the first thing they do is test you to see if you're pregnant, and it came up positive. I thought they were lying. I'm like, you've got to be kidding me. So needless to say, my middle child and my youngest child, are they're 21 months apart. Uh, we made sure that we would have no more surprises ever again. So, anyway, uh, my body <laughs> has been, then I had a hysterectomy. I got a bikini cut for the hysterectomy, if you want to call it. My butt went from looking like a butt with a crack down to it, to now it looks like a butt that's smiling. So, 
I just want to I just want to be able to breathe and to be able to move and and uh, that is my that is my desire. So 2012 is just about getting this temple, this physical temple in better condition because I do not like doctors. I don't trust doctors. And I don't think doctors have the answer for our problems besides medication and that's what they give you. And uh, I do not want to uh, be a diabetic I don't want to have heart disease. So anything that I can do on my end, um, I feel like the responsible that I need to do that. So, so anyway, that's where we're at. And I've rambled on, and this has lasted 15 minutes, 16 minutes. So I hope everybody does well. and hope everybody does good. I'm going to try to head to my cord stopped working for my computer so I've been borrowing my son's and he left with his computer in his cord so until mine comes I believe tomorrow uh, my battery uh, when it goes out it goes out and it's like torture but I can live without my computer so and he won't be home till probably about midnight so anyway hope you guys are doing well. Again, I'm going to say goodbye one more time. And uh, big hug to my HCG family. Good night.